Hello everyone, this is Rick, and welcome to Astro Club. We have a little something to celebrate today. Uh, I started this channel one year ago tomorrow. Uh, and to yesterday we went to 4,000 subscribers, or as I prefer to re refer to them, as Astral Club members. Uh, I just want to thank you guys. I think it's, um, it's I think it's way cool. I um, I think it's pretty good. I mean, you know, for in one year, four thousand uh, members, uh, especially for a channel that doesn't have any cute cats. So uh, I just want to thank uh, everyone. It's uh, it's a humbling experience, but it's certainly a very enjoyable one to be able to exchange information with um, with you guys and to learn together uh, how to astral project and what to do during our astral projections and other related things. So it's uh, it's a joyous day for me, and I hope you all celebrate. Uh, in your own little way as well. Uh, of course, it's a nice weekend, hopefully coming up here. And if so, get out and try to get some uh, some sun on that astral traveled body. That never hurts. But um, at any rate, whenever I try or I'm looking for uh, a subject for the coming week, sometimes I've had one on my mind for a while. Other times I'll uh, I'll lurk around Reddit or other places on the internet. Uh, on Reddit, I might answer a few questions. Usually, I I look out the um, I look for uh, new people uh, who are really inexperienced. Maybe nobody's paying attention to them on Reddit, and, and they'll have a good question, and so I'll go ahead and 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 answer it. And then a lot of times they'll start talking to me back and forth. And uh, before you know it, I'll hear about their struggles. And uh, learning to ask to project, as everyone listening to this, to one degree or another, knows can take a lot of work. It can also be a little frustrating at times. Some people have tried for years and without success. Others have tried for a weekend without success, and they're equally irritated by their failures. Um, obviously, this channel is meant to assist uh, these people seeking to astral project. Uh, obviously, I feel a bit worse for the person who's been trying for years than the person who tried for a weekend and, and wonders why it's not happening yet. But they're both people who really have a desire to astral project. So obviously, I want to try to help any way I can. One uh, familiar question that I have seen to one degree or another since the early days when I was involved in astral projection and when I did seminars and classes and certainly now all over the internet, whether it be here or on Reddit and somewhere else on the internet, someone will start thinking and they'll say, hmm, I'm having a heck of a hard time astral projecting. Uh, or, alternatively, they just feel like they don't really want to invest the time and the effort, or they can't invest the time and the effort for whatever reasons. But they still want to astral project. And in this wonderful world we've created, we have so many options now. Um, depending on where you live, you may have 20 or 30 menus of people who will deliver to you. Um, and, uh, or you may look for a product that you don't want to drive to the drugstore to pick up. Don't worry, Amazon will deliver it to you. If, um, if you're somewhere where driving isn't convenient, uh, you'll call an you'll call an Uber or a Lyft, and they'll come out, and they'll pick you up, and they'll take you where you want to go. So I think in that spirit, people start thinking, "Hmm, 
I cannot astral project. I cannot leave my body. But Rick can. So if somehow <laughs> through an app <laughs> or, or what have you, if Rick could come to my place and take me out of my body, well, my goodness, how convenient would that be? I get to go on an adventure without having to invest all of this time and effort and what have you and experience all this frustration when I couldn't just make it happen that way. Now, as an American, I can't help but feel a little bit of pride with that type of way of thinking in that we're always thinking of ways to get around obstacles. And we've been quite successful in our history in coming up with solutions to seemingly um, impossible problems. And so part of me can't help but be a little proud of that type of thought process. However, I receive at least one to two requests like that one every week to, to take both men and women out of their physical forms and take them for a ride, kind of like an astral Uber or Lyft service. Uh, and these extraction orders invariably come from people who haven't, haven't uh, astral projected before. Um, and their understanding of what's involved and their understanding of what exactly they're asking of me is lacking. So what I've decided to do is last, this prior week, I wrote an article and I posted it and read it. And then I started thinking, I think this would be a great video. Perhaps it would help to educate people as to precisely what's involved, what they're asking, and the consequences, possibly, of what they're asking when they're saying, hey, Rick or some other complete stranger, come pick me up and take me out of my body and fly me into the astral. So let's put things into perspective. Number one, you're asking me, a complete stranger, to leave my physical shell, travel hundreds or, in many cases, thousands of miles to your home, a place I have never been before, in the physical or the astral, for that matter. In so doing, I'll be giving up an opportunity to ride an ice mountain around Saturn, explore the past or the future, or just have a blast flying along the beach, soaring over a mountain peak, or through an invigorating thunderstorm in the nighttime sky. And none of these things should be underestimated as they are immensely, immensely gratifying places to go and things to do in the astral. And the fact that I have a very long list that'll probably last me the rest of my life uh, and that I would hardly be able to go anywhere I wanted to go if, if all I ever did was come and take people out of their bodies. However, let's go on to number two so that people can start to really understand What's being asked here? Now, once there, you're giving me permission. This stranger who, yes, sounds nice um, over this uh, video, but you really don't know me, nor I you. <laughs> We're both perfect strangers. Anyway, you're giving me permission on an energy level to, let's be honest, break into your home and creep into your bedroom unseen. Now think about that for a second. That sounds to me like 
one of the opening scenes of a horror movie. <laughs> it certainly sounds unsettling to me, and I think it should sound unsettling to anyone out there thinking about inviting an astral stranger into their bedroom. Uh, but it gets better than that. <laughs> Number three. Next, you want me, this complete stranger, to penetrate your physical body with my astral limbs and pull out your very soul. I think we've gotten even more components of a horror movie now. <laughs> I mean, think about that for a second. Think of what of what powers you are granting me in this request. Now, I, I want everybody to understand that normally this would not be possible. I have found that your average uh, healthy human has a shield around them, which protects them from any sort of uh, astral interference like of this nature. And it's it repels, you know, anyone who tries. Uh, but you can cede control. You can make an invitation to me or other entities such that that shield is no longer in operation, uh, at least for that particular entity, because you gave them permission, or you would have given me permission to penetrate the shield and to go there and pull out your essence, uh, your astral body, your soul. Um, what someone could do if you gave them that type of opportunity. And I want people to understand the level of trust they are putting in someone when they ask them, oh, could you come over here? This person who I've never met, except for we've exchanged a few things online, could you come here and do this deeply personal thing? Uh, I'm trying to you know, educate people so they understand what's involved. By this invitation, you're also implicitly giving me or any other entity you make this offer to to come take you out. And since I am the more powerful and experienced party, if I wanted to, I could implant any suggestion I wanted into your subconscious mind. Or, and this is something I don't think a lot of folks who are new to astral projection can truly appreciate, in that type of close contact, I have access, and the other person does too, if they are talented and aware enough to take advantage of it, to explore the hidden most depths of your mind. I, I would be, revealed to me would be your greatest victories, your worst defeats. Every joy, every fear, you ever experienced, your shameful secrets would be open to me or any other entity who you invited on this seemingly innocent request to come and take me out of my body. After listening to everything we've just talked about, is this truly something that you'd want me, a perfect stranger, or any other entity to be doing during your sleeping downtime? Now, granted, I'm purposely dramatizing the process a bit, but not by much, I assure you. In my astral career, I have taken two people out of their physical bodies a grand total of three times before in my life. Twice, I was involved with this 37 years ago with a young lady I met in college. She was a fellow student during my senior year. And we were both uh, attending an Ekinkar seminar. 
if you're not familiar with Ekinkar, it's a new age type religion. It was started in the 60s. It's had a, some bad press and there are accusations out there that it is an astral or it is a cult, a religious cult. I really don't know too much about it. I attended this seminar all those years ago because I saw posters in the, uh, the Union Hall advertising this seminar on campus. And in it, they showed someone leaving their body. Obviously, a topic that I had interest in and I'd never seen anything or heard about any group before that advertised something like that. So naturally, I was interested. So um, that was one person. This, this young lady I, I met in, uh, in college at this seminar. And then once uh, with my daughter 20 years ago, when she was around eight or nine, uh, those are the only three times that I actually did this. Now, I, this, this young lady uh, who uh, at, we met at the Ekin, Ekinkar seminar, we hit it off. She was an experienced astral projector as well. Who knew? Who knew? Here she is, a student. You know, I'm going to school for like three and a half years, and I see her, and, you know, we pass in the hall, and sure, she's attractive, but it never occurred to me that here comes another experienced astral projector. Anyway, we shared um, several experiences uh, in joint astral projecting together. Uh, one in which I took her out of her body and one in which she took me out of my body. And I recall that as I touched her astral hand and pulled her from her physical, she or her physical shell, I knew her very soul and she mine at that moment. Uh, that's the level of intimacy that can transpire from two open, experienced astral projectors as they touch. Um, now, inexperienced people are very jumbled and their energy can be much harder to access um, their memories and their soul, what have you. Um, and certainly, I doubt they, they get very much from, um, from myself, for instance, or they would because they're just not experienced in the process. And even if they got the information, I doubt they'd know how to store it and, and be able to remember it when they uh, awoke. But um, that was the first two times that I ever shared that experience with someone. And as I said, the next time was, was my daughter. Uh, she had made a request for me to take her out of her body uh, and I, I did so. We had a great little adventure, but as I returned her to her body the next morning, all she could recall was a vague dream of us flying over the neighborhood trees. The reason for this is that learning to astral project, learning how to take advantage of the vibrations and to generate them and to leave your body to go where you wish to go, do whatever you wish to do, and then return are all skills that have to be mastered every bit as much as a baby and a toddler has to master getting from A to B without falling. However, the last part of that skill process is integrating the knowledge that you have learned on the astral during your trip and then making sure that you awake soon after with that memory intact so that you can record it or if you're extremely experienced that you can memorize the experience and it'll be there in a couple hours when you actually get out of bed. That is another major talent which has to be uh, earned. It has to be built. It has to be created. My daughter didn't have that ability. So for, for in essence, she was, for all intents and purposes, 
a sleepwalker. And I know you've heard me use that term before. Sleepwalker is the term that I use for people who have a, a physical body and find themselves on the astral plane. Maybe they're going through astral school. At any rate, they're kind of in a sleepwalking state. So maybe something's getting through, but when they consciously wake up the next day, they're lucky if they have a vague dream of the experience. And that's all my daughter had was just a vague memory of flying over some neighborhood trees. So to, uh, to recap, not only is astral projection a skill that needs to be developed, you need to invest time and effort into developing it for yourself because you have to learn how to project yourself and to, to remember the experience. And there's no easy shortcut to that. I'm sorry, but there isn't. For those who invite strangers to take them out of their bodies, I think you see now a little bit more clearly what's really involved in that process and what you're truly asking of this person and what power and what sensitive issues you are in essence giving over to them or giving them power over you that perhaps you're not even aware of in this extremely, extremely intimate experience. So not only is that inadvisable, but when it's all said and done, unless you have developed the memory skills, it's the equivalent of dragging someone out of bed in the middle of the night who is so tired that they're virtually just out of it, completely asleep. Um, and you're, you drag them around somewhere and then put them back in bed. And then the next morning you say, wasn't that a wonderful experience we had? And they have no idea what you're talking about because they were so tired, they just weren't even aware. Uh, it's like it's like I said, it's like dragging along a sleepwalker on, uh, on an adventure and then uh, hoping that they can benefit from it. So as I said, <clears throat> Astral Projection Astral Club is here to help you help yourself. It is here to educate you as to <clears throat> how you can astral project. It's also here to fill in the blanks, to educate you as to the different methods, as to what you can do, and uh, as to the real nuts and bolts of what's involved in the astral projection experience and that even for Americans, there's no easy shortcut to the process. There is no astral Uber or Lyft. And even if you find someone who is an experienced projector who accedes to your demand for an astral Uber or an astral Lyft, I would say it is highly inadvisable uh, even if you know this person, you've known them for years and they're great friends and you trust them, I think it's inadvisable to ask something as intimate and as personal uh, as, as uh, hey, Mr. Stranger, come to my bedroom and take out my very soul. You know, it, I just think people haven't thought that through. And now that perhaps we have had this video, people be able to put this uh, into perspective and and understand that uh, it's just not a good idea to ask someone to take you out of your body. Well, um, once again, I want to thank everyone. Now that we've gone over 4,000, I can't wait to hit five. Uh, if you liked this video, hit the like button, share it with those of like mind. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already and uh, hit that bell button if you have subscribed so that you get notifications of all the videos and leave a comment or two below if you are so moved. And as always, I will see you on the astral plane.